I'm reading an interesting book called The Pool and the Portal, and it has a lot of references to older truther stuff in it. It's a pretty good book, I definitely recommend it. In part of the story, it references CERN being built on an old temple for Apollo. I'd never heard this before and so I was researching it and came across one of the strangest articles I've ever read about CERN. It was published by The Guardian in 2008, and it's so out of the ordinary tying CERN to spirituality that I just wanted to document it here and bring it back up to show that of course, as we know, there's something more to CERN than meets the eye. For some reason, the largest machine on Earth doing the largest tests has spirituality woven into many aspects of it. So here's what this article has to say. A Temple to Mystery and Imagination, Jonathan Glancy. The enormous constructions at CERN evoke great cathedrals and Egyptian pyramids, says Jonathan Glancy. Paradoxically, this extreme expression of modern science may be the most spiritual structure of our time. The huge underground complex of CERN is almost entirely hidden from sight. The presence of this wonder of the modern world is, to say the least, muted. Most of its buildings are matter of fact, industrial sheds of concrete bunkers with none of the obvious allure or artistry of the Great Pyramids of Chopes, the Parthenon, Chartres Cathedral, or Eiffel Tower. And yet, here's a place of mystery and imagination as well as mathematics, physics, and imaginative engineering that promises to take us on a journey into the realm of the spiritual as well as purely scientific and rational. In this sense, CERN is a modern equivalent of the great temples and cathedrals of the past. It aims to find the point at which creation began. God only knows what scientists will divine in the months to come. Will the origin and structure of the universe prove to be the product of some divine being, a colossal figment of our own imagination, a mirror of some parallel universe, or a quintessence of stardust? Ultimately, CERN scientists may come up against a truly mysterious nothingness, the very opposite of solid architecture, and discover that perhaps we cannot even truly understand or come to terms with the elusive core and generator of the universe. This, by the way, is a part of the reason, although expressed very differently, why the Temple of Jerusalem, one of the great buildings of legend and religious faith, was based around a physical emptiness incomprehensible to the worldly Romans who discovered the great buildings in AD 80. The temple, as laterally rebuilt by Herod the Great, might have been a mighty structure of stone, marble, and cedar, Yet its Holy of Holies, the shrine known only to the high priests, contained nothing material or tangible whatsoever. What it did house, though, was the silent spirit of God. I'll also add here, of course, as we know, it actually did house the Ark of the Covenant when they had possession of it. Many of CERN scientists are well aware of the connection between their great underground temple and those of religions ancient and modern. And just as the quest for God or the gods, encouraged the very first great works of architecture, so CERN laid out up to 100 meters below ground like some inverted Latter-day Stonehenge has been constructed on a massive scale. The 3,000 scientists, technicians, and other staff who work here, and the 6,500 particle physicists from at least 80 countries who visit CERN each year, are like some of the modern and global priesthood, the guardians of a place of hoped-for revelation that will divine the secrets of the universe and perhaps reveal the face of its creator. If this sounds fanciful, you might well change your mind after a visit to CERN. At the heart of this vast operation straddling the Swiss-French border near Geneva is the Large Hadron Collider, housed in an underground ring that may seem a little more like a long, curving, concrete-lined tunnel, much like the eastward stretch of London Underground's Jubilee Line, but its purpose and the machines that serve it are sensational, mind-blowing even. One of the LHC's detectors, Atlas, weighs as much as 100 Boeing 747s, looking like a cross between some improbably big communication satellite and the largest electric dynamo you can imagine. Atlas is the work of 1,900 scientists drawn from 164 universities in 35 countries. A true giant among machines, it fully deserves its name. A number of Europe's great medieval cathedrals were built in something like this same spirit. Teams of architects, masons, experts in geometry, and Latin-speaking divinies traveled across the continent gathering and sharing knowledge and raising immense, intricate, and daring structures aimed at bringing humankind and the infinite together. Their most profound works, and especially chartres, are aligned with the constellations as if they have been built as observatories, but with prayer rather than radio waves beaming into infinite and numinous space. Back on the surface, our most ambitious contemporary buildings, whether in Europe or in the rest of the world, tend to be vast offices and hotel towers. Cities and states compete with one another to reach even higher into the sky. None of these incredible designs, however, have any purpose beyond getting and spending. None has anything like the spiritual charge of a Sumerian ziggurat, an Egyptian pyramid, or a medieval cathedral, nor the sheer sense of wonder created by pure engineering marvels. 
whether the late 19th century Eiffel Tower or the early 21st century Veduc de Melu over the river Tarn in the massive central. No matter how odd it may seem at first, the most profoundly spiritual structure of our time, housed for the most part in function sheds and unadorned underground passageways, is a vast CERN laboratory tucked away out of sight, although very much in mind. Here is a temple of our own age, a place in space where we will have a chance of understanding a little more of the great architect and the universe or universes he set blazing into perpetual motion. So that's the article, and I just find it very strange that one of the first articles written really about CERN talking about it ties it to spirituality, to temples, to the ancient world, and their architecture that they claimed was built by the gods or inspired by the gods. CERN has had so many strange spiritual things surrounding it. The god of Shiva standing there, the god of destruction on the property of CERN, that strange dance of destruction that they came out with a few years ago, as well as that really strange video that came out years ago of people doing like a mock, they, you know, a mock sacrifice there. Some very strange things going on there, and you know, it would make sense that a place like that would be the place that could open the bottomless pit. It makes sense to me that Bible prophecy, when it's fulfilled, is fulfilled through things going on in the world. It's not always just a massive supernatural event, otherwise everybody would believe and put their faith in God. But you have to keep your faith in God through just faith alone. That's like when the Euphrates River is drying up because it's being dammed up. People look to the dams at the cause of it, and not the fact that it's still the prophecy that the river would dry up. So if the opening and the connection of some other dimension came through CERN, people would say, oh no, that's just science, when really it would be fulfilled prophecy. So that's the way I look at these things. Very strange, very interesting article, wanted to document that. And since CERN just recently turned on again, I figured it would be a good time to post this. So let me know what you think in the comments below, and thanks for watching, and God bless.